hour from now. Uh, let's get the read on all this House Ways and Means Committee member, Republican Tom Reed of New York. Congressman, thank you for taking the time to join us. Thanks for having us on. You know, Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, serves as something interesting that maybe Congress should look into this gun issue today. It was actually part of a, I think, a broader budget discussion, to be fair. But what do you make of what he was saying? Well, you know, obviously we all, uh, when you see the horrific events like this in Florida, uh, want to do something. Uh, we want to address the problem. And, you know, a lot of times people p pivot right to the gun control issue, but I stand with our Second Amendment rights. I think the, the better conversation is to get to the root cause of the problem and what is causing individuals to go without the treatment they need to get these mental health issues uh, addressed. How do we get the medical community to find a cure uh, for these individuals? I think that is something we should focus on. Do you think that, and I understand that because we do have, you know, was on the books and all of that, obviously, uh, that has to be officially stamped somewhere with some authorities that you are deemed mentally unfit. A lot easier said than done, so I understand that. Um, mm -hmm. There was nothing to telegraph in the past with, with, with Cruz that this was an issue that would have prevented him from getting, uh, in this case, a weapon, a powerful weapon at that, an AR-15 uh, semi-automatic rifle. A... Now, I guess what I'm asking you is that should it be harder to get weapons that are progressively stronger or more powerful. Well, Neil, I think uh, what, what should happen is, is that an individual such as this that exi exhibits violent tendencies, violent behavior. Um, to me, that, that is a red flag for a mental health issue that needs to be, uh, that we need to address and that you need to find a cure for in the medical community. And I, I, don't, I don't think we really have embraced it as a country yet, that mental health is a medical condition. And then as a medical condition, we can find a cure for these, these conditions these folks are doing, uh, engaging in violence but and, and no hurting people. But if there's no formal recognition that. that you have a mental problem, in other words, you know, gone are the days we had, you know, uh, state mental hospitals, that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's changed a lot now that uh, many are within the general population. And unless, you know, taken in by police over an incident that brings something to their attention, we will never know. So they're free to go. and. And, and pick up a weapon or something like that. Now, uh, I'm overgeneralizing here, but is there room for sort of tightening up the laws that we have that would police just that? I, I think there's an opportunity for that conversation because I, I think we've made great steps in deinstitutionalizing folks with mental health and, and really trying to embrace it. And we need to continue that policy. But at the same time, when someone exhibits a medical condition that's a threat uh, to our fellow citizens and their safety, I think it's an, an, a ripe time to have a conversation. How do we get them the treatment they need and protect us as American citizens? Uh, in a free society from that threat. That is an honest conversation, and that's the harder conversation to have, and that's Fair why enough. it hasn't been solved or raised. If I can pivot, if you don't mind, to other uh, news items, including the immigration uh, plan right now. The president is not keen on this sort of uh, bipartisan middle ground uh, idea where you would uh, allow more legal immigration into this country. He says that it could get out of control. I'm kind of paraphrasing his position. But seeing as that is the, that's the one that has more support than, for example, Chuck Grassley's more limited approach to this, where is all this going? I, I think if this is going to be addressed, uh, I think you're going to, going to have kind of a middle ground type of bipartisan uh, agreement. Now, I'm not very optimistic as to what I hear out of the Senate and anything coming out of the Senate, so therefore that doesn't uh, bode well for the future of solving this. But when you, you narrow this issue down to solving two issues, in my fundamental opinion, taking care of the kids uh, that are part of that dreamer population. I think that we can, we can solve that and allow them to have the American opportunity, American dream. But we also have to secure the border. And if you limit it to those two items alone, I think there is a solution that can be forged together here. But uh, so this, that, is a, that this is a slippery slope. that means by definition slope. that you wouldn't necessarily go right after the chain migration thing or the... The, you know, the, uh, the lottery uh, program uh, on migration, uh, I th those would be fought on another day. Uh, possibly, but I think you need to address some of that as part of this, because that's part about a functioning border se security. That's functioning immigration system. So I think that is part of this conversation, and maybe we just narrow it down to these dreamers, border security, and doing what we can to prevent this from happening again. Um, on the budget and the president's budget, there are a lot of people at hand is saying debt on arrival or that it doesn't even come close to balancing in the next 10 years. Uh, do you think this president cares? Do you think your party cares about deficits? You know, uh, this is something I'm very concerned.
Uh, and that's why I came out and I, I, I was very disappointed in the president's budget in regards to how it dealt with our debt. And I will also tell you, as a party, I was very disappointed. That's why I voted against the budget caps deal last week, uh, because I'm about growth. I, I, I can accept the deficit on the, the growth of tax reform that it's going to cause, but I cannot accept continuing spending policies that are unchecked. We need to get the spending in control and we need to get the debt under control because to my, from my humble perspective, the debt crisis is occurring as we speak, Neil. It's going off as we speak. That's real impacts to the future of the country. Yeah, especially as interest rates rise. It, it, it could blow up you, as we speak. Uh, you're not going to be able to find enough money out of taxpayer dollars or borrow enough to even make the interest payments. We're getting to that point yeah. where this, if you were home, you would not be able to meet your bills because you're just paying everything on the credit card tab. You're right about that. Congressman, thank Amen. you very, very much. By the way, to the congressman's point, uh, back in 2001, 2002, the average rate on our debt was about five and a half, six percent. Right now, the average rate on our debt is a little bit less than three percent. So just getting back to the historical norm, and we're rapidly heading in that direction, uh, you could be adding trillions of dollars to our debt with just an uptick in rates, not having anything to do with spending, which, by the way, is going up at an alarming rate, having everything to do with higher rates, which is also going up at an alarming rate. A 10-year note just touching, very close to touching.